So, Theon, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Okay. The first thing I'd like to ask you is, could you tell us about yourself and your journey to this point? Well, my name is Theon. I grew up in West Cork in Ireland, which, if you don't know where that is, think as remote as possible in the south and west of Ireland. Um, and that's really where I gathered a lot of my inspiration. Growing up by the seashore there, I was always seeing a lot of plastic on the coastline and also just seeing lots of these bigger plastics on the coastline. Um, and on the rainy days, I was inventing and building my own little contraptions um, just to do anything I wanted out of Lego and wood and different things like that. My parents are both boat builders and therefore they were able to show me how to build different things. And using these different building stills, I definitely had the mindset that if there's something you need, you just build it because almost everything is possible to build. But seeing the plastic on the coastline, at first I didn't connect it with something being bad. I thought it was ugly, but not really harmful to the environment. But then quite soon I realized that the plastic on the shoreline is actually harmful. It's something that breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics. And when I heard this, I was pretty horrified. So um, following this, I then decided to start learning a bit more and figuring out how much plastic there was on the coastline. But quickly, I realized that there's so much plastic on the coastline, and particularly microplastics, that we really need to start doing something about it. And I built my own little device called a spectrometer to measure the amount of plastics in water. And that's when I realized that there was so much plastic in the water that it's just incredible what we're consuming every single week and nobody was doing anything about it. Thank you. Wow. Theon, um, could you just tell me, what is a spectrometer? <laughs> a spectrometer is a device where you can shine light through a sample and analyze the light that comes back. Based on the way that the light changes, you can figure out what's in the sample. A bit like if you shine light through a colored liquid, uh, the light that comes back has changed color. And based on that change, we can figure out what the liquid is. Um, it's just a little bit more complicated when you're looking at plastics, but it uses the same principle. Normally, these spectrometers cost quite a lot of money, um, but I decided to build one, one that was relatively crude, but worked quite well. Well, absolutely amazing. <laughs> what, I mean, it, it really is amazing. It's th thrilling, and I feel so inspired to be listening to you. Genuinely, absolutely amazing. Wonderful. Thank you for helping us all. Um, where is the world right now in relation to eliminating the use of plastic? Well, I'm sorry to put it to you like this, but plastics are still increasing in use and production. We are not on a downtrend. We are still on an uptrend. We're still on an uptrend. We're using more and more plastic in our day-to-day -day lives, in our packaging, and also um, just in like more ways, more people are buying products containing more plastic and it's actually reaching more fire spread communities. So we are in an uptrend and we are actually increasing the amount of plastic pollution we're producing as well. The collection and recycling of plastic is still in its infancy, meaning that at the moment, it's still a problem that's exponentially rising in terms of plastic waste, microplastics, but also of course, um, just the use of plastic products in general. Well, thank you. Thank you for that answer. Sad as it is, thank you for uh, explaining that. Um, what has humanity got to do to get through the climate crisis? And do you think humans are capable of turning it around? I think that humans can turn around the climate crisis problem. To do that, what they really need to do is work together. And remember that every idea has the power to change our world. Also, we need to bring in youth at an earlier stage, because I think the ideas from youth often are quite unique. They're bringing together lots of different aspects in different areas, often which um, are ones that would not normally be associated with each other. And that's why it's really important that we bring in youth to look at some of these new idea connections and use those connections to solve problems. But in addition to that, we need people to support those ideas. We need people to be able to fund them. But also, everybody needs to be unified in a mindset to combat plastic waste and plastic pollution. And only like that can we solve the problem. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. Exactly. I also think that while only 25% of the world's population is youth, they are about 100% of the future, right? So 
But I do think that it's important that we do something um, to involve them in decision making, but also in problem solving and innovation from a really early stage. Okay, well, listen, let's just stay on that for one second. I mean, what what would you say, you know, to a young person? I mean, if you had the ability and you do actually speak to many, they're going to watch this film, they're watching other films that you make, they're following you on social media. What would you like to say to the younger generation that are coming through? I mean, is there a message that you have for them? Well, I think no idea is too small to make a difference. We all have the power to make change. And if what I've achieved so far has even the slightest impact of inspiring youth to take action, imagine the great things we could accomplish if we would all just let all our little small ideas um, have a bit more time in our heads and let them to be explored a bit more. Also remember that there's basically three things for you to work on one of these climate-based ideas. One is to get really angry about the environment. So if you don't know where to start, I think what you should do is go out into the environment and fall in love with it. Just like I did while kayaking off the coast of Ireland. For you, it could be a forest or even a park in a city. Then see the problems that are being faced by that place, probably due to climate change or humans on Earth. Could be pollution, could also be global warming, like I was just in the Arctic, um, or many other factors. And only when you're truly angry about those problems can you then start thinking about solutions. And hopefully you, you use that anger as a motivation to scale those solutions. You're one of the finalists of the European Inventor Award 2023. Wow, <laughs> you can't believe that. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Could you tell us, I mean, just to be in the top three, right? And nothing more needs to happen. I'm sure you must be thinking that, but that's absolutely amazing. Could you tell us about that? You know, and what have they specifically looked at in relation to your work? Well, I think these inventor awards really want to look at people who are um, embodying the spirit of invention. Not actually how useful that invention is, but for me, invention is not what you produce, but the process to get there. And I think what the European Patent Office has valued in all its finalists is that we all maybe went against the odds, uh, used the resources we had and put them together in quite innovative ways to hopefully solve a problem. So for me, um, it's really, really important that and really nice to get this award, not so that... Um, you know, they're scaling my idea or helping me scale or helping me actually reach more people, but more that I'm connected with a community of like-minded people who all love inventing. Believe me, there's not that many of us out there. And a lot of the time it feels like you're just doing this, but nobody really takes you seriously or nobody wants to support you. So it's just such a breath of, a breath of fresh air when you see that people are actually valuing your ideas and wanting to help you. Is there a way that people can support you? And, you know, where, what should they follow? Well, I love uh, telling my story all the time, but also uh, just telling random plastic facts and ways that you can live a more sustainable life. I do this mainly through my social media. So, for instance, Instagram is quite popular, but I also have, of course, many other medias. If you would like to support me in another way, feel free to reach out and uh, tell me how you would like to support on my website, fionferreira.com. But of course, um, the biggest thing that helps me do what I do is actually some of the grant funding I receive um, through uh, what I do, um, but also through my nonprofit, which is based in the US, called the Green Journey Coalition. You can see more at thegreenjourneycoalition.org. Okay, as a last question, if you had one wish, what would it be? I think if I had one wish, um, I would definitely want it to be um, around the area of sustainability and green tech, but not just that we have a greener world. Of course, that's my overarching wish, but more so that we would have a system in place to allow youth to participate in parliamentary hearings and parliamentary readings uh, in decision making, but also more so that youth scientists will have the same support as bigger stage scientists. We will have access to more resources like labs, equipment, but also access to more scientific papers and knowledge. It feels like there's a knowledge gap and it's difficult to break into that world. And changing that, particularly in our schooling system, where we change it from teaching us things to learn, instead to a mindset for problem solving, innovation, 
and of course inspiring others to do the same that is my true wish well fion thank you so much and i um, you know we, we wish you the very best you know with your journey and good luck with the award and everything that you're doing it's absolutely amazing speaking to you thank you so much for your time incredible and fion i know that we're going to be doing the world food day uh in october which is also going to be an amazing experience so i look forward to working with you then good luck take care thank you so much i can't wait to work with you again soon um just to all the youth out there remember that you have the power to change the world you might just be 25 percent of the world's population but you are 100 percent of the future and keep all those ideas in there but also not too much in there also actually put them into action and do stuff about it Take care, Fionn. Look after yourself. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.